Hello and welcome to the session in which we'll discuss trade controls and specifically international trade control. What is trade? Trade is when countries exchange goods and services amongst each other, what's called international trade. What we're going to be discussing in this session are controls, restriction on that trade. So what is that? Well, those are policies implemented by government to do what? To regulate, restrict, or otherwise control the flow of goods and services across countries. There could be one reason or many reasons for this. I can quote two reasons. One is protect domestic producers. What does that mean? It means you might have a producer or several producers in that country, for example, in the US, and those producers, they don't want European companies, for example, car producer, they don't want European companies to export their Mercedes's and BMWs and the Japanese companies. So what you do is you don't allow other countries to ship cars to the US. Why? So you can protect Ford and motor companies market share so they can sell more cars in the US because there's no alternative for US produce for US consumers. Another reason why you might place those controls are for national security reasons. And a good, a good example about national security reason, a recent example is this report that says NVIDIA, the company NVIDIA, the company that produces artificial intelligence chips that goes into the computers for artificial intelligence purposes, it dips, it means the stock price went down on the report that the US government is considering restricting exporting those chips to China. Now, this was not the final news or some negotiation back and forth, but the point is, this is for national security reasons. The U.S. told NVIDIA, don't sell, placing restriction on export. Usually, restriction is on import, but notice here, it's for export. So you could have those restrictions for export as well, but that's not very common. There are several types or tools of trade controls. Could be You could impose a tariff, you could impose quotas, or you could impose embargoes. And what I'm going to do in this session is explain each, what does each one means and how does it affect trade, starting with tariffs. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is tariffs? A tariff is a tax. Basically, you're imposing a tax. Now, why is it called a tariff? Well, it's a tax imposed specifically on imported goods and services. What is imported goods and services? Goods and services, for example, in the US, we buy from Europe or we buy from Asia or we buy from China. So what happened is the government would said, okay, if you're bringing those goods, that's fine, you can, but we're going to impose a tariff. What's the main purpose of a tariff? To make imported good more expensive and therefore less competitive for domestic product than domestic product. So what you want to do, as I mentioned earlier, is you want to protect your domestic, your domestic industries from foreign competition. This is the purpose of it. So what you do is you make the product of other countries more expensive. How do you make it more expensive? You impose a tax we call tariff. And when there's a tax, the company or the or the person that's bringing those products, importing those products, will have to sell them at a higher price because they want to make profit themselves. Then it becomes expensive for the producer to to sell. To, to, for the it becomes for the importers to sell because it's more expensive than domestic production. Now, tariffs will help mitigate dumping. We'll talk about dumping later. But a good example will be, suppose a country wants to protect its domestic car industry. For example, the US. They want to protect you know, Ford and GM, which is a bad idea, but let's assume that's the case. It could, com could impose a tariff on foreign-made cars. For example, they can tell Europeans, well, you can bring your cars, but we're going to impose 20% or 30% or whatever percent tariffs on the cars. Now, bear in mind, guess what's going to happen? Europe is going to turn around and impose a tariff on the US. So tariffs don't really work. You know, they're, they're not good for international trade. But let's assume if the domestic price of a car is 20,000 and the government imposes 20% tariff on important car, on imported cars, then an imported car that originally cost 20 would cost now 24. 
So it's making imported cars more expensive. So the BMW will become more expensive than a GM car. This will make domestic cars, imported cars, less attractive to consumers. Why? Because they are more expensive, giving a market advantage to domestic car manufacturers. Now, for one thing, it's not fair. That's one. Two, they can impose a counter tariffs, which is not good. Three, it's not good for the consumer. You want to give consumers more options because when you impose tariffs, what you're telling your domestic consumers, I'm giving you kind of a monopoly or a quasi monopoly option. Because remember, what is some 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 features of monopolistic or monopoly is you have few suppliers. Well, you are restricting the suppliers. Also, it's not good for competition. When you have competition, the domestic producers will work harder. They will have more features. They will improve their product because, because there's a threat to them. And that's the beauty of capitalism. Again, the cons of this is you'll have counter tariff practices and you'll have less international trade. So that's one way to control international trade. Another way is something we call quotas or basically simple, simply put, it's a limit. You place a limit. A quota is the limit on the amount of certain types of goods that can be imported or exported. Here, you are not placing a tax. You're telling them, look, you can bring the product, but you are limited to 200,000 units or whatever units you want to do. Or you can do this for exported, like as we saw in NVIDIA. For example, you can export 100,000 chips to the Chinese market that are related to artificial intelligence. Okay, So once the quota is reached, no more of that good can be imported or exported until the next period when the quota resets. So this is what it is. You don't want to impose a tax. The purpose is the same. Protect domestic producers. Why? Because you are limiting foreign competition, similar to tariff, but to do, but do so by directly limiting the quantity rather than increasing the price. The effect is the same. Less competition, less options for the consumer, more power to the uh, domestic producers, and it's going to basically trigger a trade war. An example will be suppose a country produces a lot of sugar and wants to protect its sugar farmers. Okay, The government could impose a quota on imported sugars, saying that only 100,000 tons of sugar can be imported per year. Why? Because they want their domestic producers to be able to sell the sugars. Once that limit is reached, no more sugar can be imported regardless of the demand. Okay, this ensures that the domestic sugar producers can sell their product without much competition from foreign sugar. Once again, the people who are working in the sugar industry, the owners of the sugar industries, of course, they're going to be very happy with this. But it's going to be it's going to be on the expense of other others, which is the consumers. Also, when comp when other countries sees that you are imposing Im imposing quotas or limits, guess what? They would react and they will do the same thing. Embargoes is the most extreme tariff form of trade control. Basically, this is that's it. Completely banning the import or export of certain goods. That's it. We're not trading with you anymore. Okay. Usually, this happens for political reasons. The best example is Cuba, the, the U.S. embargo on Cuba. Embargoes might be placed on certain goods. Sometimes we just say certain goods or on all goods to and from particular country. That's it. Like Cuba is the most restrictive and the longest embargo in history that are typically imposed in response to political or humanitarian crisis as a way to pressure the government there and achieve political gains. Again, the most classic example is the U.S. embargo on Cuba. It's for half a century. Well, it went through a varying level of rest restrictness. Okay? is one of the most well-known examples of embargoes. It includes commercial, financial penalties that have been applied by the U.S. against Cuba. It was imposed originally to pressure Cuba to move, to, to move toward democracy away from communism during the Cold War and a greater respect for human rights. Whether it's working or not, that's a different story, but that's what an embargo is. It's the most extreme. Then what we need to learn about is something, a term called dumping. This is a term used in international trade. It's a practice where a country or a firm export a product at a price lower than foreign importing market than the price in the exporter's domestic product. So what they do is they export the product to you. So for example, a Japanese company will export a product to the US and they would sell it less than what the US producers are producing the product. Guess what's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna buy the Japanese product. 
And this is done to increase the market share in the foreign market or to offload surplus goods. Now, why would the Japanese company do that? Well, two reasons. One is they want to gain a foothold, a market share, therefore would sell it at the lower than your domestic producer, so everyone will buy it. Or we have too much of it, we have a surplus. And guess what? When you have too much supply, you have to reduce your price. So you reduce your price, you sell it. So dumping can be seen as a form of price discrimination and it's considered unfair trade practice because it disrupts market and lead to unfair competition. Now, dumping is different. Dumping is basically you're doing it on purpose to hurt others or you are selling it below your cost. You can do that. Okay. In many cases, it may lead to exporters gaining a monopoly or a near monopoly in the foreign market. And you don't want companies with monopolies especially at the expense of domestic producers. I'm not saying to protect domestic producers to have protectionism, but also you don't want to allow dumping. So it's, it's yeah, no dumping. Let's have a fair playing field. That's what we are saying here. An example of this, for example, of a Chinese manufacturer selling steel in the U.S. at a price lower than what U.S. steel manufacturers can afford to because our cost of producing it is higher. The U.S. government might impose anti-dumping duties. Again, how would you fight this? You know, it's called anti-dumping duties, just tariffs, a special kind of tariff on imported Chinese steel. It, what would that do? That would raise the price of the Chinese product in the U.S. market, making it less attractive or more competitive with U.S. producers, therefore reducing the impact of dumping. So if the Chinese companies want to dump their product, well, for the U.S., for the U.S. consumer, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. It's not as what they wanted to sell it for. So countries could use tariffs, quotas, and embargoes to mitigate the practices of dumping if they want to. Embargoes are too extreme. They may use tariffs, usually tariffs. They can use quotas as well, but usually tariffs will do. Tariffs will do or negotiate, let them know that dumping is not allowed. It's illegal, unfair, and take some measures. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, multiple choice questions to learn more about this topic. Invest in your CPA. My job is to explain the material. Your job is to learn it so you can pass the exam and move on with your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.